Good morning. Boradar. Welcome to Castleton. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Dean. I'm a children's nurse and, as I just told Steve, a pretend academic most of the time. <laughs> but it's very nice to see you here this morning. Shall we start by sing, standing and singing a hymn? thanks that we are able to meet and hear your words of truth and love and wisdom. We ask that those present 
may have their ears open so that they may truly hear and their hearts open so that they may truly understand the words that are spoken to them. And we ask this as ever in our precious Saviour's name. Amen. 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 We're going to sing another hymn, I think. just going to have uh, listen to a few words and 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 then we'll finish uh, we had a service before this one and our brother Peter spoke from Mark and whenever people speak uh, from from the word of uh, God I always find myself sort of reading on and, and doing that sort of thing and I read on after what Peter said and because he was in uh, Mark chapter 1 uh, and he started at 9 and finished at 13 and then I read on so I'm going to read Mark um, chapter 1 verse 14 after John was put in prison Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God the time has come he said the kingdom of God is near repent and believe the good news and today i'm going to talk about the good news and i'm not i'm going to talk about the good news in a slightly different way uh, than we heard earlier and it was prompted by a session i had with my students and since that session i've had this phrase in my head Jesus is good for you and it was because I was, I, was, I was teaching and we were talking it was a tutorial sort of situation and I had this thought that Jesus would be go so good for my students and it's one of those things that in academic life I can't go there I can go there in a little way and I'll show you how I went there but I can't say to them Jesus would be so good for you in your life but it's been in my head ever since and it's sort of uh, a, a, a variation of um, that's um, one of my favourite psalms is uh, Psalm 100, and it's 
a variation of, for the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. And those who come here regularly know I, I sort of give that one out quite a few times. But as I said, this came out of a session I had with my students. And it was a few weeks ago, and there were about 10 of them. And they were all uh, young women. And we were discussing, it was a tutorial aimed at getting them to think about one of their essays that they've got to write. And it was about the social determinants of health. Now, a social determinant is something we do as humans or the environment we live in which affects our health. And there are lots of, lots of them. Uh, life is complex, health is complex, and so the, the causes of disease and, and chronic conditions are complex. And I asked one of each one of them, in turn, to identify a social determinant. And we'd given them a scenario to try and prompt that, and it was about uh, an 18 year old uh, woman who had a six month old child who had been ostracized from her, uh, her community, her faith community, and was on her own. Uh, and we, we, we had conversations uh, around that and we talked about uh, smoking and heart disease and cancer. We talked about obesity and uh, cardiovascular disease and type 1 diabetes. We talked about illicit drug use, about uh, unsafe sex practices, we talked about poverty and race, disability, gender and, and eventually faith communities and that's where I came in and at that point I sort of brought in, okay, the World Health Organization in 1948 said health was uh, a state of mental, physical and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease. So what does that mean? And how does that, uh, you know, how does that relate to this, this, this girl's ostracism from her faith community? And they, they were a bit lost, to be honest. They couldn't understand how that was important, how that was probably the most important thing that we needed to talk about in that session. And it, it made me feel sad because we live in a society where um, lots of our youngsters, particularly our youngsters, are not brought up in a faith. They don't have any exposure to it. The hymn we've just sung is firmly fixed in my head because it's one of those we used to sing in school, in a school assembly. And we had exposure to, even though I didn't go to church as, as, a, as a young person, we had exposure to that. There was a, a, a point last week, um, I think it was in one of the Jubilee ceremonies, and somebody was talking, was, was talking from um, the Bible, and it was that whatsoever things are, whatsoever things are passage. And again, I can remember my headmaster doing that in a school assembly, vividly remember it. And it was during the, the Falklands War. Um, and he, he, we had a lot of school assemblies uh, during the Falklands War, praying for the servicemen, praying for peace and all that sort of thing. And I thought it was sad that they couldn't see the spiritual dimension and how that affected this young woman and her child. Those of you who, uh, before the pandemic, used to come to our house for Bible study will know that I'm interested in how um, current evidence we have uh, relates to our spiritual lives, our Christian lives. And, and as, I, as I said, as I was speaking to them, and they were speaking to me, this came to my Jesus would be so good for you. He would be good for you. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. All generations. The phrase, the Lord is good, is repeated. I've, I've done a little bit of work on this. It's repeated quite a lot in the Psalms. It's spoken by several people. Um... It's in Chronicles, Nahum, uh, lo lots of places in, the, in the, the New Testament. And when we 
talk about it, the Lord is good. Our minds instantly go to Calvary, mind, mind us. Uh, because that's how most of us think of the Lord's goodness, don't we? Because of Calvary, because of what he uh, did for us at Calvary and, and in his life leading towards it, uh, that he steadfastly walked into Jerusalem. He had that supper with his disciples. He was betrayed by those disciples. He was tortured ridiculed, suffered hugely. Uh, I don't know whether you've ever done this, but when you actually look into the physical suffering caused by crucifixion, it is horrifying. It really is one of the worst deaths you can experience. And that, that was the reason for it. It was the Romans trying to humiliate and degrade a human being absolutely and cause them maximum suffering and our Lord did that for us out of goodness out of love for us and that's what we think of when we think of the goodness of the Lord the Lord is good and he as I said he suffered on that we will never know what that suffering entailed because the pure and perfect, sinless Christ died for us, took our sins to the cross. It's the ultimate act of goodness in the whole of creation. The person most least deserving of that death experienced it for all of us. For the Lord is good. But, again, faith is complex, isn't it? And my mind is instantly jumping to, to these students had before me, who, um, who had no idea about this, the nature of a faith in a person's life. And I actually sort of told them I was a Christian and told them that uh, my faith dictates my life. It's, it's not the other way around as they saw it. They, they thought it was a, a decision, but my faith dictates what I do in life. But there's more to, to goodness with following Jesus. And, and again, we can only see glimpses of that, can't we? Uh, we can only see glimpses of the truth that's contained in, in the Gospels, in the, the Bible, uh, and in the, the interpretations um, and explanations that come out of that. The Lord is good because of what he has done for us, because of who he is. He is God. But also, following him is good. And he knows that. That's, that's why, that's part of the whole package, isn't it? Following the Lord Jesus is good for us. And that's not just about our future lives, when we leave this world, it's about our lives now. And scientific research, which is something you probably don't hear very much of in uh, meetings like this, is showing that there's a lot of research into people in faith communities. And as I said, people who used to come to our house know I like this sort of stuff. So what does it say, this, this evidence from scientists? Well, it says that a, um, a greater proportion of people with a faith, and a lot of it has been done in, in Christian communities, uh, but again, they're starting to do that in, in other faith communities. A greater proportion of Christians live longer than the average person. Not only that, they are happier. A greater proportion of Christians are happier than the average person. And especially the person without a faith. They are healthier. And that's not just because of the fact that they don't smoke as much as the average uh, people in community 
Uh, they, they don't drink as much, they don't um, participate in illicit drug taking or uh, dangerous behaviours like that. It's also because of the psychological component of having a faith. So they experience less ill health. But being a follower of Jesus doesn't mean we're going to not experience pain and suffering. Of course we do. We, I think probably everybody here has experienced pain and suffering. But again, this research tells us that when we do experience it as Christians, we cope with it better. We are more resilient. Resilient is a very big buzzword at the moment in healthcare, uh, mostly because of the pandemic and what we've been through. But Christians are more resilient. Now, there's, all, there's lots more. There's lots more about it. We, we could talk about how um, uh, the, the drug um, uh, schemes that, that, that are run by faith communities have a greater success than a lot of other ones. Um, there's, there's lots of, of things like that. And again, we've had lots of cases where, individual cases, where people with perhaps a very uh, colourful past uh, experience the Lord in their lives and turn their lives around completely. There are lots of cases like that. So, Jesus is good for us. You'd, you'd think we should be shouting this from the rafters, shouldn't we? It's, it's, it's a way of proclaiming the good news. Going back to, to that passage that I, I spoke to. The good news is following Jesus is beneficial for you. Honestly, scientific research, a lot of it uh, shows that. And it's certainly a part of, of my faith. It's, it's one of those contributing factors as to to why Jesus is in my life, why Jesus controls my life, why I follow him. And again, there's lots of indications of that in, in the Bible. I was, reading, uh, I was reading Luke 8 as part of my um, going through a new Bible chronologically, which I told you about last time. I was reading Ruth 8, uh, Luke 8. And it's, I think it's okay. And it's the one where you've got the, where the seed falls. And if it falls on the rock and the sun comes along, it, it shoots up and then withers. Uh, and it falls in the, um, the, the brambles and, and again comes up but gets um, uh, sort of choked by all the brambles. And then you have the, the seed falling in good soil. That... Uh, grows and uh, has a, a um, uh, grows and grows and has a hundredfold harvest. Yes, and then you read a little bit later in, in Luke eight about how the faith, having that faith in Jesus, improves people's lives, and it's following on from the choices that those make. It's, it's almost as if this is the parable, and then these are some examples from. Uh, people's lives and, and it makes sense to me and again we can read in Paul's letters for the evidence of this in Romans 8 verse 28 he tells us we know that all things work together for good for those who I'll say it again we know that all things work together for good for those who love God who are called according to his purpose and that's one of the main reasons why Christians live longer, live happier, more resilient, that sort of thing. It's because they have that purpose in their lives. As I said, that's the reason for our lives. For the Lord is good. So, back to my students. So I said to them, Okay, so we started off with all these social determinants of health and we started off with the, the World Health Organization statement about social, physical and mental health. How does spiritual fit into that? 
and they could they, they were getting there they could understand how uh, this young woman who was ostracized by a faith community how that might affect her and I thought oh I, I, I think I, I think we've learned something here this morning uh, the university uh, has a mission statement I think it's called a mission statement teaching and learning strategy and it talks about us being co-creators of education co-creators of learning the, the teaching staff and, and the students and I came away from that section uh, that session thinking I've learned something here because I was stood there well sat there in front of them thinking about all of this and I hope they've done that and it, it, it as I said that phrase has been with me ever since the Lord is good knowing Jesus is good for you physically socially mentally spiritually good for you and to sum that up and again that's this is this is uh, one of the the main lines I always always comes back to me he is the truth the way and the life early believers were known as following the way the way of life it is a way of life that we have and it's a good way of life because our Lord is good and he has blessed us in our lives today and in our lives to come with that goodness and I give thanks for that I give thanks for that every morning when I read my Bible and, and, and prayer I give thanks for that uh, quite a lot of the time during the day uh, usually after I've had sessions with students uh, saying thank you for all the goodness in my life Lord uh, because they usually go okay here's the truth the way and the life I thank him for that blessing in my life I hope to help people to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ in my spiritual life in my working life in my family life um, and I think that's that's what we need again that's one of the things he wants us to do that's how we follow him uh, and it, it, it just all of this wraps itself up again and again and again and it makes me think I'm doing the right thing you know there are lots of reasons why I'm a Christian lots of reasons and this is one of them thank you for listening uh, we shall uh, say Amen now and uh, would you mind closing in prayer? Thank you. Shall we just pray? Father we thank you that we can just re-echo the words of the psalmist the Lord is good and Father thank you that for those of us who have experienced that goodness practically in our lives Father, we pray that we may take these thoughts on board and take them away with us and that they may indeed guide us in our attitudes towards others, to our actions in the community, to our work, to our homes, to every sphere that we move in. May we always remember your goodness and your love towards us. Father, bless us now, we pray, as we come to the close of this time together. Go with us our separate ways. May we know your abiding presence with us as we commit and commend ourselves into your loving hand. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen.